How what's the average stay for people with you guys? That's a great question. The average stay really is about six to seven nights. However, we have a lot of one and two nighters that are here just for checkups or mm -hmm. appointments. And then about half of our rooms, 45 to 50 percent of our rooms at any one time, have a guest, a patient that is gonna that has been there at least a month. So we have guests that are there six months, nine months, sometimes a year. Um, if you're at the top of the transplant list and you don't live nearby, you have to come and while you're waiting, because you get that call for the organ, you need to be there. If you're going through um, cancer treatment or you're a stem cell patient and have a stem cell transplant, you need you could be there for six to nine months because while there's a portion of your treatment that you're inpatient, um, but then after that, there's several months, many months where you need to be at the clinic every day. And if you live in Lynchburg or Bristol or, you know, Roanoke um, or Northern Virginia, we really serve across, you know, really every county from Virginia um, has been to the doorways. All 50 states um, we have served and several um, international countries. So, uh you came through COVID. I know before that you guys were rocking and rolling. Everything was good. You yeah. know, right, it was tough, but you understood what it took. Then COVID showed up and didn't leave. What did you guys learn coming out of COVID that you never did before? That all of a sudden you're like, that thing worked. Right. What did I? Okay, let's go back. Hold that question. Okay. And so I asked uh, Carrie over at the Ronald McDonald House, and Greta was here as well. You guys said that some big changes when COVID happened. Absolutely. That what you're describing is not exactly a remedy, but we're going through a pandemic. Let's talk about what you had to do to make it through COVID and then what you learned on the other side. Yeah. So, you know, typically we have 150 guests every night because we serve 10,000 guests a year. I mean, we're a lot bigger than most people think, 60,000 nights of lodging every year. Mm. So to go from 150 plus or minus, you know, fewer on the weekends, maybe more in the middle of the week, um, to COVID, where a lot of elective surgeries were canceled, treatments were canceled, um, but even still, we would have 50 to 60 people every night, you know, isolating, you know, still getting treatment. Um, our volunteer program obviously had to shut down. Um, people, you couldn't leave your house. How could you leave to volunteer? Um, some of our staff work remotely, but if you think about we're 24 seven, we're on site and we have the most amazing team, you know, from the front desk staff to the housekeepers to the maintenance team, um, you know, the admin staff that needed to be there. Um, so we had to do a lot of changes, as you might imagine, from cleaning and, you know, filters and just much more of everything, if you will, separation, isolation. Um, but what was really the, you know, the steadiest thing throughout was the staff. They all showed up, they were dedicated to the mission, um, and they delivered on it every day. And it really just, you know, again, the people that had to still be there were so appreciative. You know, again, if you're going through cancer treatment or a transplant, um, you know, you can't stay home. So what did you learn coming out of that? So that, a, do you okay? Somebody asked you before, and you would no, we can't right. do that thing. We ain't doing that. Right. And now all of a sudden we're on the other side of COVID. Right. You know what I really learned again? We've always had amazing team members, um, but what really um, hit home was how dedicated everyone is to the mission. Nobody said I can't come in today or I'm afraid to come in today. Um, they were all there every day. So I always knew it was a great team but it really showed how dedicated they are to the mission and to our guests. Um, and the other thing that, you know, really I think was special is while we couldn't have volunteers in the building, we still had, you know, people would, um, our Amazon wish list, or they would go in and, you know, purchase things that could be delivered or donate things that could be delivered. Um, we had to shift our meal program because again, without volunteers, um, there were, you know, several volunteer groups that would still figure out a way to either bring us frozen foods um, or order pizzas one night. Um, the another organization, the Underground Kitchen, they pivoted their entire model. Shout they out helped. to Michael Sparks and yes, those guys. yes, shout out to Michael Sparks. They started making soups, um, and they were amazing. Um, so just, you know, it's incredible that when people want to give back, they figure out. One of the things, so when I, I've, I've worked and done some things with, with Carney, he says, when people come to him, and he said, we start at yes. Mm -hmm. 
We started, yes, and figure out how we're going to make this thing work. So before that, I didn't realize that you guys are, are you're in the hospitality business. We are, right? It's a, it's running a hotel and a nonprofit. Okay. All righty. So uh, what does the doorways need? And because you guys are helping and supporting the community, what is it that you guys could use? Well, of course, at, like every nonprofit, donations are key. Um, because we do not charge a fee, you know, many other hospitality houses across the country, they charge um, a fee instead of ask for a donation. So it may be a discounted, you know, rate for a hotel night. It might be $79 or whatever it could be. But if you're saying 79 bucks can... Six months? Yes. Adds up. That right? can break you. So we um, are always looking for donations. Um, and you can obviously go to our website and donate. Um, but in addition, just not to, in addition to money, you know, in-kind donations are important to us. Again, we have an Amazon wish list. Um, so those types of things are important. And then always volunteers. Again, as I mentioned, our food program is one of our biggest volunteer opportunities. You don't have to be a big company to do that or a church group. And small groups of friends can come, families come, um, prepare a meal, serve a meal. It's very rewarding. We also were an old building on um, the corner of 7th and Marshall Street, an old motel type. So all of our walkways are external. So we're famous for our Windex parties, which doesn't sound like okay, a lot of fun. Okay, ma'am, exactly. <laughs> it's a Windex. Yeah. Okay, what's so, that? So at home, washing your windows is really no fun. At the doorways, we have big, you know, plate glass windows looking out to the city of Richmond that need to be cleaned. So um, groups will come, team building groups, what have you. We give them a lot of Windex and some big squeegees. And on a beautiful day, they have a lot of fun out there. How squeegee. often do you guys do that? Um, other than the winter time, pretty often. Because, you know you what? Know, okay, I can handle that. <laughs> so I got to get my crew. We can come down to the doorways. All right, so I was in the army. We used to have a GI party. This is first cousin to a GI party. Yeah, yeah. It, it's going out there, Windex and cleaning. Yeah. Okay, that's it. All righty, so uh, one, a couple quick questions. As a leader, how do you set the culture for a winning organization? So great question. And, you know, we are always looking to you know, improve our culture, um, build relationships, you know, that camaraderie. Um, again, for a nonprofit, it's, it's easier to do because of the mission and seeing your mission every day. Um, I love Carney's idea of starting with we started, yes. yes. That is, that's, that's awesome. Um, you know, one of my sayings is always, you know, sort of assume positive intent. You know, especially when people are stressed, they're not always at their best, whether you're a you know, team member, whether you're a guest, whether, you know, but to your point, you know, just look beyond that and see how we can.